Hello, everyone, with another episode of Innovation from the Global South. This is your host, Dr. Almas Taj Aban, on Future Frame TV, the collective podcast of Traces Dreams. My today's guest is Dr. Leila Tarizadeh from Azerbaijan. She is a doctor by profession. She is also running her startup business and founder of an accelerator program. She is running so many things and to know about her wonderful journey, let's invite her to our show. So Leila, welcome to the show. How are you? Thank you, Amaz. And you? I'm fine. Good to see you. Thanks for joining us. Leila, tell us something about your profession. I know that you're a doctor and uh, how was it and then how you became an entrepreneur? Uh, that's a nice question. My education, I'm a doctor. I graduated from the medical university and hold PhD in public health and healthcare organization with 15 years plus experience in healthcare management. And actually now and in the past, I was a, a CEO of the private clinic. It's family owned clinic, which is um, focused on the neuro rehabilitation and the um, long-term rehabilitation of the neurologic and psychiatric patients, but I step into innovation work approximately six years ago, and it started with my startup, it's a mobile application, Receptron, which scans medical prescriptions, and it reads medical prescriptions, you know, the doctor's handwriting is very, very hard to read, and the issue for patients to read the handwritings, and so the and the idea was that mobile application is reading prescriptions and then transforms it into the text and send notifications for the patients about the time when to take the medicine. So and we solved the um, issue our patients uh, meet. They have difficulties in reading physicians' handwritings and they are missing their medications time and they miss, missing the treatment course. So this application helps patients uh, to take their medications on the right time. So this was your your first startup venture. Uh, how it went? Yes, idea uh, came from my daily practice because you know there is uh, two problems with patients. First, the medication shortages. Uh, in emerging markets and the uh, second is a uh, handwriting uh, reading so the first is uh, that in remote regions we have pharmacy coverage shortages we have medication shortages so people need to visit 10 and more uh, pharmacies to, to find the right medicine so this application actually uh, helps people to access their medicines so you send your prescription and you get offers from the pharmacies and you now you know a way to go and you know price and uh, you know distance and the availability information about the medication. So it helps people to access their medication on time. And if any medication is in shortage, it helps in a, in a short time to, to access the medicine. The second option is that uh, application also sends the notifications about the treatment course. So people can stay uh, alarmed about their treatment course, about their medications and take, take their treatment course in the right way. So I, I solved the, the problem uh, during my da daily practice as a doctor. And so why not to turn smartphone users' life in a better way? So why not to transport, transform it in a better way? So just we can use a very uh, accessible tool like a smartphone to help our patients to keep with their treatment and to keep with, with their medications in the right course. So in 2070, I presented the idea at the Global Entrepreneurship Summit. You know, it was a GSTI tech competition. And then we accepted to the Founder Institute acceleration program and uh, we won the fellowship from the Founder Institute and we were at the top of fifth of applications who deserve this fellowship and after the four years of intensive acceleration we we incorporated started. 
but but we struggled for five years because we were doing bootstrapping. It was a very difficult time. So I spent my money from my pocket to, to stay alive because, you know, pharmacy market is a very strictly regulated market and it's, it has very high entrance barriers in different countries. So, and the medication delivery, it's sometimes prohibited by the regulation in many countries and the regulation differs from country to country. But we were starting for five years, but you know, a COVID pandemic changed the situation in opposite way. So, because online pharmacies were green lighted by government and we go to our first investment and now we're, we're kind of successful and uh, you know, startup. It shows how timing is very important for to start your business, you to start a new venture so in the in this course of five years of your startup five six years of your startup you just saw now you know recently because of this covid situation things they started changing and as you said that yes. in the beginning you were actually uh, putting your own money how how was that phase yes. and why you didn't give up because we see that there are many startups uh, who arise you know there are many people they have ideas but at this moment, when they start, you know, investing their own money, it is very difficult to sustain the business for, you know, three to four years. So tell us something about that. Yes, actually. Yes, that, that's important moment, you know. Uh, when you start your own venture, you have to be ready to invest your money because you have to show the people and, and also to investors that you have invested into, into your idea and you believe into your idea, into your team. So, and you are investing continuously your money, you spend your money. So, and when, it, when you pitch in front of investor, you are already have, have a, a five years history of investing of your own money into your business. Why? Because you are believing it. It's a really uh, important problem uh, at the markets that we are solving. That that's a good proof of uh, eligibility of the uh, that that the idea is validated. And uh, when is timing coming? You just show that, <laughs> guys. You know, it's a pandemic and people are sitting in their homes and they need medication to be delivered <laughs> on their address. So and oh, so that's quite interesting. That's, uh, I mean, as, yeah. as you said, that for the legitimacy of your own ideas, first you need to believe on yourself because otherwise no one's going yes. to believe in you. And how are you going to get get investment? And you yeah. mentioned about Yes Tech. I um, it was a program by um, by US State Department, and you have been part of the Global Entrepreneurship Summits as well. I saw your photo with Ivanka Trump, GES that held that was held in India. So what was that? Yes, um, the, you know, uh, we, we have met with you at the Stanford uh, 2017, and it was my first experience with the Global Entrepreneurship Summit. And year after, uh, I got an invitation to the Hyderabad, India, but this time I was traveling with my main team. And she was the youngest uh, participant at the Global Entrepreneurship Summit. And uh, when I was back uh, after the acceleration, I, I, um, I understood that uh, I got the um, experience I, and I have to pay back to my community and, to, and they started the mentorship and they started the acceleration program. And uh, my mentor was at the first of my batch of the startups. So, and I advised her also to apply for the Global Entrepreneurship Summit in Hyderabad and she was successful and at the, that time she was a youngest participant and she attracted what was she her attracted age? sorry what was her age uh, she was 15 wow yes very young with the, mm-hmm. her sort of, uh, idea harvesting energy from the uh, rain so and the um, we have got all headlines, you know, <laughs> and we, we got viral where we were back. It's, it was a, a kind of a trigger in Azerbaijani startup community. And everybody started to believe that uh, even if, if you are very young, but you have idea and you believe in your idea. And if you are um, younger from the rural community, you can, you can be successful. It was a very good role model for the school children as well. And so 
and that it was a good uh, trigger for our startup community. Now everybody was talking about startups, about innovation and so on. So role models, they are very important. Definitely you also were, uh, were a role model for her. And uh, how about your role models? Did you have any? <clears throat> you this entrepreneurial <laughs> journey? Actually, uh, when speaking about role models, I, I have well, let's say my targets for a, for the next five years, maybe. That's uh, when speaking about not role models, but, but about targets. I always speak about targets because I, I have always plan, plans uh, for the next week, for the next month, and I have uh, things to do and things to, to be accomplished. So that's very important for me than having the role model, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> because when you have uh, certain plan, plans for the next month, next year, and next five years, it's more useful than having the role models. Maybe uh, at my age, that's that's uh, maybe if I were younger, uh, I I would I would have models, <laughs> role models. As so well. you are at that stage in your life where actually you believe more on setting your own goals because yes. Um, you have a family, you have children, you have your own professional life as well. And then you're working in these uh, entrepreneurial ventures as well. And I can definitely see that you are pretty much busy in all this, uh, you know, all so many things around you. Let me ask you another question. You, you mentioned about GISTEC, I, GES, Founders Institute. So uh, while working with all these institutions, what were those capabilities or abilities, those characteristics that you were able to build in yourself that were absent before? Or in other words, outreach activities and such entrepreneurial courses, are they important for the growth of an entrepreneur? I have got a huge experience and knowledge at the same time because before a Global Entrepreneurship Summit and before a Founder Institute Acceleration Program, I didn't know anything about the customer, customer research, customer development, about the business models, how to run the startup technology venture. So it's very important to have mentors who, who can share uh, their experience with you, who can open networking opportunities for you. Yes, it's impressive experience. And uh, I got a lot of knowledge. Uh, it, 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 it was like a, having MBI course just in a four months, very extensive, intensive, and uh, very useful. So you definitely uh, encourage other young entrepreneurs to invest time in such courses if they have yes. uh, an opportunity. Actually, they have to do because without knowledge, without the market research, without customer development skills, without communication team building skills, you are not able to uh, to do something. Lela, you have your own startup accelerator as well. What that serves for, who can be part of that accelerator, uh, how that accelerator was born. Some, tell us something about the history of that. Now we're talking about the new space accelerator uh, and open innovation program. So uh, when I were back after the Founder Institute, acceleration, I understood that I got a, a huge amount of the knowledge and I have to pay back to my community and start and start a, a kind of mentorship for the local community. So the idea was born then. I was a, like a co-founder of the another acceleration program. It was a kind of social innovation lab, but then I, I decided that I, I have to start my own venture accelerator. And then um, I started New Space Open Innovation Program. It was a kind of internal accelerator for the other cosmos, the biggest satellite operator in the Caucasus. And, and we do uh, startups, we accelerate startups in space tech. But we do I understood that uh, space tech is very narrow industry and the Azerbaijan market is very small <laughs> for, for space tech. So, and we decided to add some other verticals and we became the independent accelerator. And now we do several acceleration programs. And uh, actually we do innovation, corporate innovation services, acceleration for the government, big, big organizations, big governmental organizations, universities. So we do kind of uh, innovation programs for, as a services for big ventures and universities. 
We design incubators, we design hackathons, we design different corporate innovation programs. So it depends what, what, what the client wants. And your clients, they're, they're, uh, they're global. They're from countries other than yes. Azerbaijan. Um, they are international clients like uh, ISESCO. Uh, we designed the program ISESCO Accelerator. It's a global accelerator program, which is focused on the member states and igniting the member states uh, innovation community and uh, also creative, com- uh, creative ecosystem. So, and we target five industries, including agriculture, dig- digital media, food tech, fintech. Currently, we do a pilot program in Azerbaijan, Kazakhstan, and Uzbekistan. And I wish it will be successful. So I, I'm sure it will be successful. And the next year, we are targeting 10 more countries, ISESCO member countries. Tell us something about, a little bit about ISESCO, because mm-hmm. probably most of the, our audience, they, they don't know what you're talking about exactly. Actually, many, many of us uh, heard UNESCO, yes? Yeah, it's, ISESCO is uh, the same thing as a UNESCO, but for the um, Islamic countries, Islamic World Science Education Organization. So actually they uh, coordinate all scientific, cultural, uh, educational program in member countries. And the member countries are mostly Islamic countries. Um, and currently ISESCO has um, more than... 54 members, member countries, and uh, most of them are located in the Asia. So it's uh, like uh, Pakistan, uh, Bangladesh, uh, Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, Central Asia, and many, many countries also including Africa. So uh, it's a big kind of network. And this organization, ISESCO coordinates all um, educational, scientific, and cultural um, like, uh, cultural programs uh, within these mm-hmm. countries. Great. So most of the countries from the global south they are part of this program. It's a it's a wonderful information for our audience uh, who are listening from the global south. So Leila, I will go back to the first point of your entrepreneurship from where you started. Obviously, it was mm-hmm. a it was a different idea. Uh, it was an innovative idea. Yes. Very basic question. What is innovation for you? That's a nice question. Everybody speaks about innovation, but when you, when you ask what is innovation, nobody knows. <laughs> <laughs> for me, innovation is a kind of invention that has practical implementation and the kind of monetization. So when you monetize your uh, invention and make it publicly accessible, it becomes innovation. So that's my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> so from the from the from the point where you have an idea and to the point where you start money the journey is quite long and filled yes. with you know quite big challenges how lela tackles with those challenges you know just it's not easy you you know the, the acceleration itself is not easy but uh, running your own venture in technological venture a startup because you know startup is a it's a fast growing but financially, uh, financially very weak, vulnerable uh, technological idea or creative idea. And, you know, it's growing very fast, but it's financially unstable and it needs a, a lot of investments to stay alive. So uh, it's very hard, you know, and uh, it's very even more harder to run a venture in emerging markets, in the young markets, in startup markets. So, you know, when the startup ecosystem is very young, you have, you absolutely have no success stories like WhatsApp, Skype, nobody knows, you know, international investors don't know about your country, don't know about your startup ecosystem. So you almost have zero angel investors, venture capitalists, which is very hard for startups to attract money to, uh, to find the funding sources. So, but the, the single, single idea is, that you have to believe in your idea and you have to believe to in in your team. You know, in any business, the good team you have to to get a good team players. That's a must have, must have thing. So and never give up. So just believe in your idea. So if you validate your idea, your business, your 
you are solving the real issues, world problems. So you will be successful. Just with the, that's a, it's a matter of time. That's quite interesting to be an entrepreneur Apart from having, you know, one idea, you need to have many other skills, like, for example, team yes. building. What are your tips yeah. for team building and what is a good team, in your opinion? I, I, I had a very painful, a painful road uh, starting for, from the like a venture as a solo entrepreneur and then uh, find the co-founders. Because, you know, uh, finding right co-founder is... Uh, very hard, as hard as finding the, like a, maybe a partner, life partner, because you you share your ideas, <laughs> you share <laughs> your co-founder share his time or her time with you. So, and it should be people who are believing in your idea and who are ready to work with you day by day, every day without getting paid. So just people who are really believe in you and in your idea. It's very hard to find such kind of people. But if you are lucky, so in the, if you are doing good networking, you, you'll be able to find people because, you know, not everyone is interesting in, in the money. So people have like a, uh, their passions, they have kind of uh, their target and I would say ideas that they are believe. So uh, if you find the right co-founder and at the same time, this co-founder should be ready to share his time and his money. And also um, it kind of, because, you know, we are not ideal people. So I like some, some of skills. For example, uh, I may like networking skills or good presentation skills, but you have to find people who, who are like a compensate uh, that's gaps in your character. So if you are not good in networking, you should uh, you should have uh, find a co-founder who is good in networking or in pitching skills. So very difficult chemistry <laughs> to find <laughs> the right, <laughs> right co-founder. But, um, you know, um, I agree. It, it it's, so wonderful. it's a wonderful tip. I mean, it's not like finding a friend because when you find a friend, you're like, always going for, you know, the similar characteristics. As you said, it's just yes. like finding, you know, a life partner where you are yes. seeing someone who is going to fill the gaps that are that are your personality. Yeah. So, I mean, team, team building is like, it's not like you are having a companion for yourself, but for building a kind of a, a kingdom, you know, yes. on the basis of the idea that one person has. And obviously sharing the passion for that idea, this is also one of the other very important aspects that we need to consider. About networking, Lela, uh, I have seen that there are many events, you know, every day in the city where, you know, entrepreneurs, they live uh, on a daily basis. There are so many networking events. So people, they meet with different people, but then uh, the next day, no one remembers with whom they met. So, yes. uh, you, know, you know, those long lasting connections, do you have any tips how we can have long lasting connections for uh, having better networking for taking the venture forward? First tip would um, to have a good people and good friends who can introduce you because you know uh, the networking is a very difficult process so we met a lot of people we 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 talk a lot and you, you say at the end of the day we don't remember anything uh, but uh, when you have someone who trusts in you uh, in you and who can introduce you to the right people that's a very important uh, thing so having the right people by your side who can introduce you to the uh, right people it's a must have for any for any any entrepreneur you know so uh, good introductions it it's it, it's a must have there's a question about gender so how about the gender uh, issues that we have in most of the countries from i think it's it's a it's a problem overall in some countries it's more in the others it's less, we see very less female entrepreneurs. And then networking is something that is very critical for females because they have their families as well. It's difficult for them to, you know, stay late hours outside home for attending the dinners and, you know, having sittings with, with the friends. Well, when we see uh, men, it's very easy for them. It's very easy for yeah. them for, you know, going extra hours just for 
sitting and having conversations for building, you know, those long lasting connections. So for women, it's not that easy because they have families as well and children and many cultural and social barriers as well in many parts of the world. But many duties, uh, duties, yes. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's, you're right. Um, you know, um, in, in terms of networking, I, I think that the uh, most important thing, uh, not a quantity, but quality. <laughs> You know, you can talk a lot and stay till uh, midnight uh, in the parties or in meetups, but uh, at the end of the meetup, uh, you, you get nothing. But you may have just 20, uh, 20 minutes of the productive talk and when you can introduce you or someone introduce you in a good manner, in a, in a best way. So it's much more productive than staying till midnight in a, in a meetups and the parties. So just quality and the kind of, uh, uh, let's say, um, uh, communication skills, how you introduce yourself, how you, uh, your body language, it's, it's the most important things in networking. So personally, me, I'm not, I'm not a person who is talking a lot. So I'm just laconic and I, I prefer to say five words and two sentences, but uh, deliver the <laughs> purpose of, of the idea, what I want and what I'm expecting or how can I help people. So, uh, so in terms of networking, I, I suggest that the uh, quality, how, how you are present yourself is most important. So you don't need to stay at the midnight, <laughs> be successful. <laughs> Okay, just so uh, you, use the right body language and right presentation skills you, uh, how, how you are speaking how you are presenting yourself and it will be okay, it okay will so be right nice. body language yeah. right idea right place right yeah. people right you know, introductions right interactions so quality time quality networking is really important this is yes. something that you uh, you would you know give advice yeah. to other women listening to you Lela, yes. why we have less female entrepreneurs in the whole world, actually. It's not just about Global South, but overall we have less. So you, are, you yourself, you're an entrepreneur. I think it's a, it's a matter of courage, maybe, because not enough women take responsibility and take courage to be entrepreneur. So just they're afraid of responsibilities. Uh, so they are easily running family, but running family is much, much more, uh, it's harder than running the business, but then they don't have enough courage to, uh, to run a venture or to run a business. So they just need to live in, in, in themselves. And maybe it comes from their, um, from family. They need um, people who can uh, motivate them, who can encourage them to start a business. So it's just just a matter of courage. Uh, I don't think that that the discrimination play, play uh, plays um, important role. Not even in Azerbaijan, where uh, women are not discriminated in order of accepting to the. Uh, to the jobs, so gender is not important for uh, in Azerbaijan. So I, I, I can share the example from my experience. I want to promote one of employ employers uh, in my venture to the next position, and when I am asking who is ready to to be promoted, so the all men they are raising their hands, but women not. <laughs> so, <laughs> So they are, they are not believing in themselves. So that's the main problem. So just it's a matter, matter of the courage, I think. Is there another problem as well that exists that uh, probably we raised our women to be responsible for the families and uh, by the end they, I mean, you know, they feel themselves so much, so much overburdened that they try not to have extra burden from the job side. As you yourself said that actually doing a job is easier or having a career is easier compared to raising a family. Uh, however, if when we see around us, the concept is completely opposite. People, they think that for women, it is easy to raise a family and doing the job is something so difficult and they should not go into that that actually men, they're more capable of doing it. So uh, what do you think? Is there some kind of, you know, misunderstanding that we have created within our societies? Maybe it's kind of a mindset, you know. It's important for girls 
to have uh, their mothers, uh, working role model mothers who are in business rather than st staying at the kitchen and cooking and uh, preparing meals, uh, but having the mother who is uh, running the venture. So they are rising in a family whose mother is running business, who, who is successful. Uh, she is a, uh, like a public figure. And when the uh, daughters and when the girls are seeing this model, they, they will inherit uh, the kind of features that uh, doing business is not so scary, you know, <laughs> it's, it's not <laughs> dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> when we will, we will have more women not staying at the kitchen so all day. So uh, being women at the kitchen is okay, okay. but uh, two hours, three hours. But when we, we see more women in business, society uh, running big ventures successful women so then girls will, will see their role models and they will kind of will uh, have a willingness to step into the business world as well definitely i agree with you when you were one of the role models that i know personally and you have a wonderful journey wonderful story tell us how you balance your own family and why you don't think like, you know, those women who are a bit scared of taking extra responsibilities. So you have your, your husband, your family life, your children, and how you maintain the balance. Uh, thank you, Almas. Uh, it's a very nice question. You know, um, I, I always say uh, that running family as well, it's a good teamwork as well. Uh, you have to get right people who are keepers by your side, you know, the, the husband who, who is understanding you, that you, you, you were born not for, for a kitchen, but um, for more big ideas or for business and for running big ventures. So um, it, it must have, a, again, family is also team building. So you have to share responsibilities, you have to share uh, time, and you have to share a willingness so it's a good teamwork as well. So it, it, it's, it is the same as the running good business. You know, here you have a good working team. There you have a good family team who is helping you. That's, that's the only one secret. <laughs> who inspires you? Uh, by nature, I'm a doer. And I'm, for me, uh, just living a simple life, it's not enough, you know. Uh, I uh, set up my targets and set up my plans. Uh, I'm not discouraged by the problems, just problems they are inspiring me uh, to find the new solutions. You, know? <laughs> <laughs> so you find your motivation in your problems. What is your dream for the future? Uh, my dream is apart from a uh, kind of innovation uh, ecosystem, but you know, I'm running the uh, private uh, family clinic, but uh, I dream to enlarge, enlarge this facility and uh, to build a kind of new facility, which will be very large and comprehensive center uh, for rehabilitation of the neurologic patients. So that's my dream for the next five years. So to build comprehensive rehabilitation center for patients. That's great. And uh, any advice that you would like to give to the future entrepreneurs or the current entrepreneurs as well that are listening to you? Never give up. Uh, never say no to opportunities and uh, care about uh, your health because, you know, when you have not health, good health, you are not able to care uh, 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 care about your children, about your family, and you are not able to run a good business. So care about your mental health, uh, that uh, will be enough <laughs> to be successful. <laughs> Just quickly, as you're a doctor, I would really like to uh, listen from you for good mental health. What are those few practices that every one of us should include in our lives? The first thing is a good work uh, rest balance, you know. So I, I take uh, two times uh, vacations in a year to go apart from business, to, uh, to go apart from all this bus and when, where I can just rest and enjoy the nature and uh, let's say to keep in order all my thoughts and uh, keep, keep in order all my mind. So uh, having good, good vacation, it's a must have. 
So, and uh, never multitask because it's uh, it's uh, like a thing that is uh, brings you to the burning syndrome. So, uh, you have to plan all your working time, your rest time. This is family to build borders. This is this is working. Uh, space and time this is a family time so just have a good time management that's all and never never stress you know just when you face stress just take a pause and uh, take a kind of rest and take it two three days to think over the problem and after three days you just our brains need need times to digest digest all the problem and you will came up uh, came up with a uh, solution never to be hurry, never be like a stressful. Okay, thank you very much, Lela. Very useful tips. It's important to, to distract and also to have good time management to be focused on our goals yes. and also not to disturb uh, or as the word that you use, burnout, uh, you know, our mental yes. health. So thank you very much. It was lovely to have you in our show. Thank you very much, Almas, for your invitation. I hope I were useful for, for your audience. Definitely. And I think next episode, probably someday, we are going to have for, you know, for improving our mental health because I can see that there are so many people out there, especially because of this COVID-19 crisis, many people without jobs, yes. many people with, um, you know, so many problems. Many of us lost our dear ones due to COVID. So this is a time for recuperation to recover i think yeah yes, I so think definitely so. Uh, i think i'm going to have one more session with you on that uh, but till the next time that we sit together on for an online uh, show recording take care of yourself and thank you. thank you very much have a good day so dear audience i hope that you have liked our today's episode please don't forget to subscribe our youtube channel of traces dreams this is your host almas signing out till next episode Take care.